What's up guys and welcome to Affordable Ergon Reviews. Today we have more information about the Snowpeak M60. And guys, first I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. All of you guys have been helping me out, sharing, like, and comment with this uh, video that I did on the review and the hunting pest control video that I did with this rifle. And guys, the numbers went skyrocket the last month. Thank you very much for all your support. But here today, we are here to answer most of common questions that I have in those uh, videos. First thing I wanna say is, uh, here is an adapter that is pretty much brand new. I just put it on today. I haven't test accuracy down range yet, but I know uh, it's gonna work pretty much the same. And guys, most, question that I have is if this rifle came with a half an inch of threads. This one didn't. I hear some Snowpeak uh, M60s came with half an inch threads already. This one didn't. So pretty much I don't know which one you're gonna get because Snowpeak are sending this to us on bundles and maybe one bundle will be different than the other one. But if yours doesn't have the half an inch, you're gonna pay only like probably 30 bucks to buy this adapter and guys, it works great. And I would like to have this adapter better than have the original one with the half an inch thread because it's, it brings out the suppressor close to half an inch, uh, you know, further from the bottle. If you have a suppressor like the Suma from Don EFL that is pretty chubby, pretty fat uh, suppressor, or let's say the Fat Boy, and you have a bigger bottle than 450 cc, the suppressor is gonna just hang on top of the bottle and you won't be able to turn it all the way in and get the suppressor tight because it's gonna just bend the barrel. Okay, so keep that in mind. I'm gonna put all the links necessary to order one of these adapters if you don't have one uh, on the video description below so you can get it from Ergon Archery Fun. Uh, the second question that we have very common is the carbon fiber bottle. This rifle didn't come with a carbon fiber bottle and I get that because a lot of people just went straight to uh, pretty much our hunting pest control video that I did with this beautiful air rifle. And guys let me tell you something when you throw a carbon fiber bottle on this, it's probably gonna cost you 150 to 100 more dollars. But this thing is amazing. You know, it's working very, very well. You take a lot of weight out of it. If you get a compact one, guys, less weight, better to walk around. Uh, the rifle is very, very strong. You can feel, you know, it's no much plastic involved other than the cheeks piece and this back area rest pretty much is still like Snowpeak has been bringing a lot of good stuff to the market lately you see from Snowpeak a lot of good quality air rifles from pretty much a uh, low price and guys I have high expectations from this rifle since the beginning and he's working great so keep in mind the carbon fiber bottle is not from factory. This one is a 450 cc. Just to give you an idea how much clearance we have from uh, the suppressor to the front of the bottle. And this one comes from my FX Impact. Uh, the greatest thing that I did with this rifle is the male foster fitting. This male foster fitting is not a regular foster fitting. This is a foster fitting with a different size of thread. I can't remember right now, but I'm gonna drop the link on the video description below so you guys can order one from uh, Amazon. And most of you guys know if you see the review, if you watch the review, you'll see the gauge was right here in this area. And after you remove the gauge, uh, you put the foster fitting uh, and super easy to fill it up. Uh, pretty much you're gonna lose the gauge which is reading the pressure of the bottle. What I did was uh, do my research 
how many shots per fill I got with this kind of bottle. You have to do the same thing in your house to check what, how many uh, shots per fill you got from uh, the size of the bottle that you ordered. From this one, I'm having right around 120-ish on um, factory settings. Pretty much is working great because it's 450. Uh, if you have something smaller, you know the count is going to be lower. But uh, still, you know, you have to do that using the gauge. And then, you know, like me, what I do, I shot like 80 shots out of, a, out of the tank. And then I come back and fill it up. Most important thing is have some kind of surge that you can read the pressure that you put in on the bottle. Because you don't want to have an accident over uh, filling the rifle. Uh, if you have a hand pump, let's say the most affordable way is a hand pump. Most of the hand pumps, they have a gauge uh, while you're filling. So read yourself from that gauge and make sure that gauge is working properly. Uh, if you're using a compressor, most of the compressor pretty much, I haven't seen any compressor out there without any gauges. So you can uh, fill it up watching your gauge and don't go all the way up to 250 bars. Uh, trying to stay 220, somewhere around there. That way you can be in the safe side, even though you're gonna lose a little bit of shots per field, but you'll be in the safe side. What I have here is a block from my old Hudson Spark, and I removed the block, put a gauge over here, breeding valve over here, male foster feeding, and a female foster feeding. Now all I do is just remove this here, connect it, and that way I can read the pressure that I have on the bottle while I'm filling. After we stop filling the air rifle, I won't be able to read it because on this side, the pressure in here is only the regulator pressure. So keep that in mind. Uh, I hear how I said already, uh, the new version that we're going to have at home pretty soon or probably in the way they're going to have a foster feeding and a gauge on the valve. If I ever get one of those valves from West, I hope he sent one to me. I can replace this valve and have a gauge in there. I believe the new ones are going to have it and also probably going to have, probably going to have the half an inch adapter on the front. After all, guys, tuning wise, the rifle is working great. I haven't touched trigger, hammer spring, or regulator. Everything is still the same. For those who ask me, uh, Manny, did you change anything for the hunting video or pest control video? Pretty much that's what it is. I didn't. Everything is still from factory. Same thing uh, that you see when I was shooting on the review. If you haven't seen the review of this rifle, I'm going to put it on the video description below. After all, guys, the rifle is working great. I'm very, very happy with the results. And, guys, we're going to work more with the rifle and see how much he will be capable to do, you know, in a long distance. But that's going to take a little bit of time because the place that I go, I only have 140 uh, yards that I can shoot with a backdrop of 220. I don't want to pass any 220 because... I know houses are close to 350 yards, but I want to be in the safe side, so I won't be shooting, passing that distance. And guys, I think it's plenty of yards to shoot. I don't want to hurt an animal at 250 yards, and you know, it's pointless. It's pointless to don't have a clean kill. All right. So guys, that's it for today. Any questions you have? Please let me know. I'm probably going to work around the rifle and see how you can adjust more the power, stuff like that. Probably in a long way. Not right now. It's not going to be right now because I love the rifle just how it is. Money-wise, the rifle is great for the price. And it gets you shooting like a high-quality Ergon out there over $2,000, $3,000. Uh, guys, keep in mind, this is an Ergon. And... If you are going to be shooting in your yard, you don't need a $3,000, $4,000 air gun right there. Because, guys, every rifle gets more and more expensive as soon as you start adding parts on that air gun. All right? Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. And see you in the next one.